What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Back again with another Larry Bird moment from the Amazing Plays playlist, where we break down uh, individual plays by players or teams, and you know, dissect it to the best of our ability and talk about the play and. I think it's amazing or why you think it's amazing and you shared it with me and um, good subscriber and you know supporter forgive me if I mess up your name Nikau or Niku Hansha Butsuno Nikau Hansha Butsuno uh, wrote to me speaking of breakdowns you've done that's my favorite content I'm actually glad I'm glad that is because I was hoping uh, you know, people kind of like the breakdown because I really enjoyed it. It was something new I wanted to try. And I'm glad finding people that really like it. Uh, he continues, or assuming it's a he, this person continues. And I was actually wondering if one of Bird's passes would qualify for a breakdown. The only example I've seen of it with adequate quality in text is that in the Bird is the Word video. It starts at 1217. So I went back to that video. I found the play that our good friend uh, Hansha Butsuno was talking about and we'll break it down it won't require a lot of analysis it's a pretty straightforward play but it's it is an absolutely amazing play it's one of those Larry Bird falling on the ground with the ball and then passing it Larry Bird more than any other player I've seen in the history of the league has more passes pinpoint passes with him on the ground or on the floor finding an open teammate just like he has the most passes I've ever seen of full court bombs, quarterback style, pinpoint. The dude is a master at those cross court passes and on the ground, ground passes. But let's check this one out. Absolutely sensational. Running back, got that, uh, Stranglehold song playing ever since I watched that video, but watch it again and then we'll break it. It happens really fast So I won't say much but on the, on the breakdown. I'll talk about it Sensational sensational court awareness sensational find one more time one more time and in, 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 um, real real-time motion Real-time speed sensational play by Larry Bird. So if you notice here, when the play begins, it appears that um, Robert Parrish already has the ball, right? I don't think everybody on the court realizes that yet, but he couldn't have had it for, for, for any lengthy amount of time because the players would have all started running back to the other side of the court to get back on offense and defense, right? So Parrish has the ball, and this player swipes at it and breaks it loose out of Robert Parrish. Now the ball's right there. The ball hits what appears to be the lower leg of Bird, his right leg, bounces on the floor because Larry's about to catch it. Hit his leg and now Larry is reaching down, many scramble for the ball, as is Robert Parrish's assignment. Now Parrish, I love this part here about this play. Notice Parrish, he already knows, <laughs> Parrish knows. Paris has seen this time after time after time. Robert Paris says, screw it. I'm not even going to help Bird fight for this ball. I know Bird is going to get this basketball, so I'm just going to keep sprinting. I'm just going to keep sprinting towards the other end to catch one of those Larry Bird bomb passes because I know it's coming. So Paris is like, F it. I'm sprinting out. Now you see number 10, he sees what's going on. Number 10 doesn't want to leave. His eye is on the scramble, but he knows, smart on him, he knows Parrish is sprinting down to the other court, um, to the other side of the court, and so he's going to say, F it, I want to stay, and I'm still looking, but I got to sprint out with Robert Parrish. Now, also notice here, and good on, good on Mikhail, this was actually some good, like, non-verbal team communication because you can't you, playing with bird you probably absolutely assume he's going to get the ball because he does it time out of time but you don't know the absolute certainty so you want to at least 
one or two players to stay back in case the ball doesn't go your way. So they're back on defense to prevent, you know, a mismatch for an easy bucket. So Mikhail kind of kind of floats there. I think that's DJ. So does DJ. But you notice Danny Ainge here is saying, well, I'm going to sprint out with Parrish because I know Bird's probably going to get this ball as well. And Mikhail and DJ stay back. So I think they I think they played that well. Two players back, two players front. Larry being the center focal point and make the decision uh, once he gets the ball. Or if he doesn't get the ball, he'll be back on defense as well, right? So good, good team decision now. Now, like I said, Parrish starts spraying out too, assuming Bird's going to get the ball. But Parrish doesn't keep his eye. Parrish doesn't doesn't take his eye off the the scramble down there. So once Parrish notices that, oh man, the ball just popped loose of all the players involved in that scramble and it's loose. Paris kind of halts his sprint a little bit and stands back to see what's going to happen with the ball. Now, notice Parrish's defender here decides to say, screw Robert Parrish. I'm close to that ball. I'm going to get to it before Bird. So he turns around and jumps. Now, Parrish says, uh, Bird's pretty close. The ball is about even space in between them. I think uh, Bird is a little bit closer. But it looks like Parrish's defender might have a little bit of uh, momentum before Bird starting for the ball. Um, however, they both go for it. Got one player on the ground there. And at this point, Parrish has completely made the decision that he's not going for it. He'll let those two scramble. And I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep ahead because now there's a mismatch on the other end. I'm out there closer to our side of the basket. Parrish is out there and there's only one defender. So we're going to probably score an easy bucket uh, once Bird gets this ball. Now, notice Bird here, man. Parrish's defender, um, not Parrish's, uh, Danny Ainge's defender. Was I saying Parrish before? If I was saying Parrish instead of Ainge, I apologize. So Danny Ainge's defender here. Good on him. Diving for the ball. That shows heart. That shows hustle. S dives for that ball. Larry Bird said, uh-uh. That six foot ten frame with them long arms. Get over here. Sucks that ball up right there. As he lunges for the ground. But make sure that he gets a hold of that ball before he even hits the ground. Here we got a, a, a whoever this defender is, Angel's defender. Womp, womp, womp. I, I, I knew he thought he had that ball. He just he just hit the hardwood floor. <laughs> Bird said, give me that. Imagine flying for the ball and then just seeing something suck it up and just slow motion on the floor. Bird sucks that ball up. Good court awareness by Larry Bird, man. He must have called Ainge out of peripheral at some point. Because if you rewind here, it looks like Bird is he's focused on the ball here, right? Unless there was some type of verbal communication where Ainge was like, yo, Bird, I'm sprinting out close to baseline. I don't know. I doubt it. But Bird, he must have caught Ainge right here out of peripheral. And probably even more so right here. As he's lunging for the ball and notices that hit, that's, that's Ainge's defender. So he knows where Ainge is. But beautifully done. Avoids any other type of scramble. And they're being this close from the baseline. It's about a foot and a half, two steps away from out of bounds. But avoiding lunging towards the out of bounds. Making sure he stays on the court. And I don't, I don't know if you want to call this breaking your fall or not. Not like he had much of an option. That was really... The only place he could land was on this guy's back, but that did that could not have felt good to have bird six foot ten, you know, frame body landing on your back. And then thinking about Bird's bad back that Bird has. Bird does not have a good back. So whether Bird's back landed on the floor or landed on somebody's body, I know he had to feel every bit of that. And that did not feel good. I'm sure it didn't. But Bird lean in. Looks like at first he might just land on his shoulder, but he continues to contort back on his, uh, you know, lower back and um, buttocks there. And gets rid of the ball. No look style. Perfect pass damn there. Predominantly with the left hand. 
while landing on somebody, the ball takes only takes one bounce on the hardwood right there, one bounce, and then Ainge has it before it can even touch the floor again, and it is off to the races. Now it's actually a three on one because at which point you see um, Kevin McHale has already got to step on his defender. At this point, McHale sees Bird has the ball control the ball he knows bird is going to flip this ball over his shoulder he knows so mikhail said i will catch you later he knows before his defender knows now we got a three on one on the other side of the floor ainge with mikhail and robert parrish and his defender is not going to get the step on Mikhail. It's not catching up. That as a three-on-one fast break, buddy. Three-on-one fast break. Not just an amazing play by Bird, but I think an amazing team play this is as well. Everybody legitimately making the right decision in a split decision. The right decision in a split decision where they should be on the court given the current situation on the floor. I think Parrish was smart for running out there. I think Ainge was smart and actually I don't know if Ainge did this on purpose but you know by Ainge no you know never mind because they both because I thought he stopped down Ainge's defender slowed down based on Ainge's reaction but it looks like he was he was he was going to fade and shade off Ainge anyway to go for the ball but Ainge made the right decision here by deciding seriously deciding not to go for the ball and just you know keep running and then Mikel made the right decision here once he confirmed that Bird had possession of this ball and was going to pass that baby back to start running out ahead of his defender. So not just Bird, but I think everybody made the right call. Every single body. But yeah, that, that's an amazing, amazing court awareness, amazing over the shoulder, predominantly left hand pass, bounce pass to the defender as you're landing on your back, avoiding out of bounds. And like I said, you know, you've watched enough Larry Bird highlights or you watch them play. This was Bird on a regular basis, man. You will find a plethora of Larry Bird video footage of him making these, these passes on the ground, on the fly. And he's one of the best players I've seen at making decisions, making the right decision and the good decisions in a split moment's time. Anyway, Hansha Butsuno, thank you for this recommendation. I think you picked out a great play here. I enjoyed breaking this one down. If anybody else wants to add anything to this commentary, you saw something that I didn't see or you have uh, your own individual unique perspective, perspective of it, I would love to hear your opinion. In the meantime, check out our Larry Bird playlist. Check out our reaction video playlist. Check out our amazing plays playlist. See if there's other stuff you might like on there. And take care and be blessed. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. We out, baby.